What's up beautiful people of YouTube, GRC here back with another mouse review for you. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Gladius 2 Core. This is ASUS's budget version that retails for just $50. With all these lightweight mice being released, I thought I would change things up a bit and take a look at a mouse with no holes. I know, crazy right? As always, timestamps are below in the comments section if you want to skip around. Anyway, enough jibber jabber, let's get into it. First up is Shape and Shell, and this is what really drew me to this mouse in the first place because it has a fantastic one. While it does share similarities with other large ergonomic mice, the Gladius 2 still feels quite unique. It's a little bit like the Razer Death Adder, but shorter in length and taller in height. Asus finally brought the weight of this mouse below 100 grams, which is great to see, but I can't help but wish they would have taken things a step further and lowered it closer to that 80 gram mark. A while back, I actually tried the Gladius 2 Origin, which weighs about 110 grams, and found that it bothered my wrist just after about an hour of gaming. The reduced weight of the core version does help, but I still found my wrist talking to me after a few hours with it. Overall, the shell feels solid and well built, no creaks or cracks on my copy even when stressed. The top part of the mouse has a nice matte plastic finish, and the sides are a glossy textured plastic. No rubber side grips with this one. I usually prefer rubber side grips on my mice, but I had no issues with the materials used here. The almost ribbed sides provide excellent grip, even for my sweaty hands. I also really like the simple, somewhat understated design. You have the standard RGB on the logo and on the scroll wheel, but you also have that almost hidden ROG logo on the left side of the mouse. In general, I think it's just one of the cooler looking standard black mice. I really like the contrast of curves towards the rear, and then when you get to the front, it's a mostly angular design. Mouse 1 and 2 are surprisingly good. They feel nice and crisp with low pre-travel. I also really like the comfort grooves here. The side buttons are also great with low pre-travel again. Placement is good, they're definitely not in the way, but I do wish they were a bit larger. Here's a quick sound test. Unfortunately, the scroll wheel here is one of the many weak points of this mouse. Mouse button 3 is way too light, and I found myself accidentally activating it numerous times while scrolling. It seems to be okay for browsing, but I would definitely not recommend it for gaming. One of the main features of this mouse is its hot swappable buttons. ASUS includes four screws that can easily be removed without disturbing the mouse feet. Just take off the rubber covers and unscrew them. Now, only mouse 1 and 2 are hot swappable. If you want to change the side buttons, it will require some soldering. This is a nice bonus feature, but frankly, the buttons are already great, so I have no desire to change them. Still, if you're really into mouse buttons, this could be a big selling point for you. It's just not for me personally. The sensor is perfectly passable and usable in game. Since this is a SUSE's version of a budget Gladius, you're only getting the Pixart 3327 here. It's not going to win any awards for its accuracy or responsiveness, but I never once encountered an issue with it. Even when purposely trying to make it spin out and lose control, I was unable to do so. A higher end sensor like the 3360 is obviously better and will feel a bit more responsive, but the important question to ask yourself is, will that matter in terms of real world results? My answer is probably not since many people have actually won tournaments using just the Pixar 3310 sensor but ultimately, that's for you to decide. Mouse feet here are really quite poor. They remind me of the G-Wolf skull feet, but perhaps a bit worse. The glide is really not that smooth, but I think that's more a result of the feet being too thin. 
Seemingly, the only positive here is that it appears they can be easily replaced with aftermarket skates. I did not confirm this, but it looks like the Hyperglide's model MS3 are a perfect fit. Frankly, for $50, I expected a better mouse cable. It's thick and braided, which is good for durability, but bad for flexibility. It doesn't make the mouse unusable, but you're going to want a mouse bungee. Just picking it up and holding it, it feels like a $50 mouse, maybe even a more expensive one, but for the given price, I was really expecting or hoping to get a 3360 sensor. When you have other mice on the market like the Glorious Model D or even the newer Razer Death Adder, it's kind of hard to recommend the Origin. Yes, its shape and buttons are top notch, but unfortunately the rest of the mouse is weighed down by the sloppy scroll wheel, thin mouse feet, and flat out poor cable. That's not even to mention the weight yet. I think we've been spoiled by all these fantastic light mice that are coming out, and it just feels like ASUS is late to the party. Interestingly enough, just a year ago this mouse would have been a decent recommendation, but in the current mouse market, I have a hard time recommending anything over 90 grams. Of course, weight is a personal preference, so keep that in mind when deciding if this mouse is for you. But objectively speaking, for the same price, the Model D is a better value. They both have great buttons, fantastic ergo shapes, and software offerings, but the Gladius loses out when it comes to sensor, feet, and cable. I think for ASUS to stay competitive in the mouse market, they're really going to need to up their game, and I hope that they do because I would love to see a lightweight Gladius with an improved cable and mouse feet. Anyway guys, that's going to do it for this video. As always, I hope you found it helpful. If you'd like to see more content like this, consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.